Did you see Ali Dawa here as well? I, th I was going to speak to Ali Dawa because he's, he's had a similar... Yeah, kind of... of course. Of course. No, How are you having Of course. I, you could hear that then. Um, I don't, yeah. Muslim? Alhamdulillah, Riva. Yeah, see, this, was, this will be an easier conversation. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Yeah, buddy. So Thanks got, again, man. I've got a question. Do you sure you want it on camera? Yeah, that's okay. Okay. That's okay. Maybe Are you Muslim it'll benefit. Yeah, it's Muslim. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe it'll benefit me. Uh, you can uh, take it. Oh, well, yeah. So my question is as follows. I be recently became a revert. Bear, bear in mind, I'm not a scholar. So it, I know. Yeah, yeah. I know. I'm just asking for some advice. Sure, sure. Recently became a revert and difficulties came with that, especially from my family side. My family is very, they're not religious. They're not, you know, we, we are what we call Druze. Have you heard of this religion? The rules, no. Yeah, so even I don't know much about it. I was never convinced with it, but um, it says to be a sect of Islam. But if you dive deep into it, you discover that it's not really a sect of Islam. And there are different prophets and different ideologies that they believe in, such as reincarnation. Not human to animal, but human to human. Heaven and hell don't really exist. Um, so it wasn't really resonating with me. So I did my research and by nature I am a very curious guy. So I started asking the right questions and Alhamdulillah. I'm just gonna move this here. Yeah, sorry, yeah. So Alhamdulillah, uh, started practicing around three years ago. But I'm very close with my family. And recently, they, like maybe a year ago, they started seeing more of my Islamic practices. My Salah, my uh, Siyam, you know, me going to the mosque. They don't live here, which is a good thing for me because I get to practice freely. Mm. Uh, but every time I visit, it's kind of me living two lives. I, I can't show them because if I just show them that I'm going to Jum'ah prayer, ah, oh, you don't have to do this, you don't have to do that. Why? God doesn't, you know, it's, God didn't tell us to do this, God didn't tell us to do that. And I'm finding it difficult because I'm a very, 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 very close with my family. Mm. Extremely close. And it's been a challenge for me because I know later on I want to get married. And I don't want to marry a non-Muslim. I want someone who prays. I want someone to help me with my deen. Yes. Do you know what I mean? I don't want someone to make my deen more difficult for me. Because I've been there, I've done that. I don't want to do that anymore. So I want someone to help me with my deen. And I know if I do that, for sure I'll lose my family. Mm -hmm. How do I go about this? What do I do? The analogy that comes to mind, that even if you see a big rock, and there's a drop of water that falls on the same place, and drop of water, why is a drop of water? Very weak, puny. If it drops on the same place for a very long time, you eventually there will be a hole, even in that rock that will emerge from that very soft substance. So I guess what I'm trying to say is slowly but surely. If, for example, I flick a little bit of water, it's not going to have an effect. A bucket of water, that's going to you know, make you lose balance. So for some people that have that have certain aversions to religion, you just need to dial it back slightly. Slowly, 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 talk about certain principles. When you see that the time is right, because you know your parents better than anyone else. Yeah. You know that your dad doesn't like talking when he comes back from work. You like that on Saturdays, he's very relaxed and he's open. Or when you go for eating, that's when he starts talking about all sorts of topics and you can bring that topic in. People say mothers are more susceptible to kind of these sorts of conversations. Normally, when it comes to brothers, they say their mothers revert first, then the father, the father normally, the head of the family, he takes a bit longer. <clears throat> For some people, they have to pray in secret and they have to kind of, yeah, like even Ali Dawa as well, he said he would have to pray in secret. Even now, his father is very unhappy with him as he swears at him and says this and says that. So there's certain things, bro, but the fundamental thing is always give them that respect Always give them that always, love. Always, yeah. And from that, I'm telling you, even somebody with the hardest of hearts, they will say, you know what, I'm seeing Islam in this person. I'm seeing the change that it's doing for that person. Like that's, I'd say the best Islam is the one that's implemented. And no matter how hard your heart is, you see someone practicing and changing because of Islam, that's the best hour that can happen. Then they become receptive to you. Then they're like, why, why is it that you're like this? Why is it? Oh, it's because you know, you know that principle in Islam or it's in Islam, but it's also in so you notice that Do they do they, are they more receptive to certain principles when you mention a few faiths and you say oh, it's a religious thing or Are they okay now when you say certain things are Islamic things? 
take things step at a time, slowly, slowly. When you notice you tried something and there was a big resistance, dial it back, regroup and try a different way. Have a strong support network though. Like if you've got fellow reverts or whatnot, have a WhatsApp group. Yeah. yeah. And then, you know, have the like, halakas are very important when people can kind of speak about their things that, like, yeah, bro, really struggling in this and that. And they say, you know what, keep at it. Bro, Ali Dawa, been in Dawa for so long. A lot of people know him, mashallah, does fantastic work. Till today, his father's still on his case, but not accepting Islam. And he tries, he, and Hidayah at the end of the day, my bro, will, will, will come from Allah. And if it's meant to be, wallahi, bro, even if you just sit and do absolutely nothing, they'll accept Islam, if Islam is meant for them. If it's not, then it won't, so don't feel it's that pressure, but don't take too much of a distance back as well. Take comfortable steps, like I said. Small drip feed when it comes to your mother or your father. See, with mothers, we can have you know more frank conversations than, say, the father. And uh, yeah. But it worries me because one day is going to come, you know, we never know, but the day is going to come where, you know, Allah will take his amana yes. and they will have to pass away. Yes. So my worry is I want to be able to do something for my parents yes. you know, after they pass away, but I know I can't do that. You can after they pass away. I can't do any ongoing deeds. Do you know what I mean? So what can I do to, you know, I know if, if, if God doesn't give them hidayah, I'm, you know, it's going to be very hard for me to accept the fact that my parents are eventually going to hell, you know. So that's that that is very difficult, bro. And you merely the way you've just articulated that to me, and even maybe the people that are watching, even if I had a really hard heart, that that affects me as well. Yeah. So I I refuse to accept that if you when the time's right, again you don't know what that time is. You have to ask Allah for when that time is. You might even speak to your mother. <clears throat> upon occasion or your father with such sentences and say look I have concern for you I have worry for you this I don't know what's gonna happen to me afterwards bro sometimes that's what that's all it is we don't need fancy arguments don't need fancy things sometimes it's just a heart-to-heart -heart conversation but before then knowing what the opportune time is that comes from dua you, you make dua you pray to Allah Certain, I know Abdul Rahim Green, his father accepted Islam on his deathbed and then he passed away. So, but you know, there's also, sorry, there's also, I'm not sure if it's the Prophet Sankar that was, did not accept Islam. Yeah, but Talib, he didn't. Yeah. And it's scary. Yeah, it is, this it is, is very, very scary. You know, and that, that's, you... that's what I'm saying, bro, that from, I, I'm trying to hit it from different angles, like psychologically, sociologically. Like psychologically, it's like knowing when's the best time to speak to the person. Hitting it from this angle, hitting it from that angle, rhetoric, how to speak, and you know, waiting for positions. Like maybe your mom's really upset about something and say, look, inshallah, everything will be okay. Or, or that might be like one of the, not inshallah, things will be okay, but does she believe in God though? She does. My parents, that's the thing, you know, my parents don't drink, they don't smoke, they believe in Allah. They just you believe in the Prophet? I feel like they do, they just never tell me. Okay. I feel like they, they know that's the truth. Yeah. But societally, they live in a societal kind of lifestyle, like not yeah. a not a religious life. Whatever the society is, whatever their surrounding is, they go with it. The other day they were going to Christmas, celebrating Christmas with their Christian friends. Yeah. And I was telling them, why are you going to celebrate Christmas? Yeah. And they go like Rami, we accept all religions and you know we do this and that, we don't we don't discriminate and and then I told them like you accept all religions but you can't accept so, who I am. Yeah, yeah. You know? <laughs> it's, it's it's just it but upsets that's, me. It upsets no, but that's me. good though. That's that that will have put a seed in their head thinking it's got a good point. But yeah. remember, you want it and I obviously it's very difficult to sympathize with such such a situation. You're absolutely right. I don't claim to know how you're feeling, but all I'm saying is that the time will come from Allah. It won't come from me, it won't come from you. If it's written from them, it will come. But in order for you to survive till that time and be equipped for that time, constantly asking Allah, constantly looking for, for ways to kind of put that forward. Like that point that you made to your parents is fantastic. 
I, I, I refuse to believe that that's not going to have any impact they on them whatsoever. They just get angry, you know. Whenever no, I mention a point mm. and whenever I have a debate with them and I see them get angry, I just go like, you know what? But that's good. Get it. But so the thing is, you've said something, then you just let them, and then you realize I went a bit too far. Da, 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 you change the subject. But when their mom's washing the dishes, dad's in that long drive, they're going to be thinking about what you said. I'm telling you, bro, they don't like to admit it because you're the son, they're the parents. They're supposed to know more than you. They're supposed to be in a position of, you know, um, control and command. Suddenly, the one that we've given birth to, the one that was in his nappies, he's telling us? Yeah, it's kind of like that. Yeah, of well. course it is, bro. Because with parents, they see it like that. And they would never, they, they, some parents will not show it to you. That doesn't mean that they are not feeling it inside. That's what I'm saying, bro, that just make sure you have the ikhlas and you keep trying because at the end of the day, that's what's going to help you. That when you say, you know what, I, I honestly was doing my best. I tried my best and khalas. That's, that's, that, that's all we can really do. But that strength to kind of know what to say and when to say it, that will come from Allah. That knowing when and what qadr is, that will come from Allah. But to try, your mashallah doing fantastic. More of this, if you see it's pushing them a bit too hard, back off a little bit. Don't, don't debate. Parents don't like debate. Yeah, They like stories. Stories is the best way to get through to somebody that in, in a roundabout, in a soft way. That's why the Quran is filled with stories. Stories is the best way to teach people because it's done indirectly. The person doesn't feel attacked. Yeah, If I tell you, oh man, there was a guy, you said Druze, isn't it? Yeah, I met another brother, you know, he's from the Druze thing and you know, uh, he, when he was standing, you know, he wasn't standing like this, you know, he was standing with his arms to the, standing with his arms to the side and this and that. Now, automatically, I haven't told you to release your arms, but you're thinking, oh, so he was doing that, so maybe, maybe I should do that, but I didn't tell you to do that. You see, I'm telling you of somebody else that was doing that, and then you're automatically, the questions are coming to you and the answers are coming from yourself. That's why stories and waqiyas, which means stories of happenings of other people that has happened to. Sim similar example. My you can even, yeah. for example, say if I was in your situation, I'd say, Mom, you know, just, just come from the mosque today. My friend's mom passed away and you know, he is absolutely in tears. Like he's just... Uh, she didn't accept Islam and I don't know what to say to him. Like, what do you think I should say to her? And then whatever she says, there's no right or wrong answer. She can say, I'll tell him. He, she, they can do what they want. This is wrong. This is this, this is that. Yeah, he was really sad, man. He was really sad. You're not saying, right, this is right, this is wrong. You're just talking about emotion. It's a, it's a subjective experience you're talking about. So sometimes with debates, we're, we're very hopped on to facts. Sometimes just reflecting a story and just emotion or just a question. Mom, what do you think about this thing? Hear their thoughts. Hmm, interesting. And then you don't say anything. But well, what do you think? Oh, Mom, you know I disagree with this, obviously. It starts like that, you know. You see. But yeah. then say, but obviously I don't want to make you upset. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, yeah. I think, but yeah. They don't respect that, bro. But slowly, slowly, bro. I'm telling you, slowly, slowly. My brother, has, my younger brother, has accepted Islam because he. Alhamdulillah. He, Congratulations. <laughs> yeah, before I, um, when I used to do everything in secret, because I used to live in Dubai with my family. When I when I used to do everything in secret, my YouTube account is linked to my our TV. Mm -hmm. And I used to search like Zakir Naik, and I used to search like surahs from the Quran and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So we used to open the TV, the YouTube TV, and his friend, when he'd come over, his friend used to tell him, "Isn't that your brother's account?" Yeah. We were like, "Yeah," and his, his friend was a Muslim, mm -hmm. so his friend encouraged him, and my brother also started. Uh, and Alhamdulillah, now slowly, slowly, I'm not. My brother, I recently found out he kept it away from us, just like I kept it away from my family. Yes. And I told him he should have told me, and we should have, we could have supported each other. I was going through this on my own. Yes. I was going through that pain on my own. Why didn't you tell me? Yes. You know? Why didn't you make me feel like, you know, you feel what I feel? Yeah. You know. The the Druze, um, which country primarily? Primarily followed? Lebanon, Syria, Jordan. And Palestine. that's where your parents are from. 
My, my parents are Lebanese. Yeah. My, my mom's Syrian, my dad's Lebanese. Mm. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, I think, I've done, I've, done, I've done a bit of research. I think it's a sect of Shia. Okay. I'm not too sure, don't call me on that. I'm not too sure. Yeah. But I'm not really, it just didn't go into my mind. It didn't make sense to me. So I, I just uh, tried to find the truth on my own. Alhamdulillah. Uh, Alhamdulillah. And I asked a lot and yeah, Alhamdulillah. May Allah keep us steadfast. Keep, <laughs> keep us keep us on the right way. Because think about it bro. If it if it came to just us supplicating and somebody accepts Islam, sometimes a person is not ready. Sometimes they need to go through certain things. Allah has a plan for all of us. Some people they need they need a few knocks in life for them to realize, you know what, let me listen to what my son is saying, let me listen to this. So many people. They, they come back, even in the park, you see people more receptive. They're like, yeah, years ago, I wasn't. today somebody accepted Islam today. And he said, yeah, just uh, I've come to a point in my life that it's, yeah, it's enough's enough. Like this, this is the only way. So Alhamdulillah, um, Qadr, it's something that's decided by Allah. If I was to make dua and so and so, every, everybody would be Muslim in the park today. <laughs> But of course, we, we would love that and uh, I'm not trivializing, of course, the, the want of certain people accepting Islam more than others. And of course, our parents, it's enough to break us. Of course it is. Um, but the thing that deserves and the, the, the strongest connection that we have, bear in mind, sons, daughters, mothers, fathers, brothers, sisters, all transient. No relationship comes close to the relationship that we have with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah, I have to make a choice. I've come to terms with that. I have come to terms with that. It's just so hard. It's difficult. Of course. And inshallah, when the time's right, the one who you have made the sacrifice for, inshallah, the time will come that they accept Islam. That's, sure. that's primary. Yeah, that's, that's what we want. If Allah does not will it, then may Allah give us the strength to handle that decision yeah. and uh, give us khair. Maybe, bro, something might happen. Bro, I've seen people that something happens in their life and they're like, you know what, I want to make sure no one else goes through this. They start, you know, going on dawah expeditions and learning the religion and making sure hundreds of people accept yeah. Islam. Yeah. Wallah a'lam what the plan is. Yeah. Wallah a'lam, I, I agree, don't yeah. know. Yeah. And the thing is, even yeah, with our parents, bro, sometimes maybe they say even with certain people that khair, that's, that's another issue. That's with other people that Islam hasn't reached. But inshallah, a few of those words have helped, bro. Inshallah, I appreciate your time. No, Thank my you pleasure, so much bro. for your my patience pleasure. and time. My pleasure and jazakallah for waiting as well. Yeah, no, that's all right. That's all right. It's worth it. It's worth it, definitely. When you, see, yeah. when you see Ali Dawa here as well, I, th I was going to speak to Ali Dawa because he's, he's had a similar yeah, kind experience. of story. Exactly. You know, and maybe he could relate to what I'm going through and maybe yeah. he could advise me on what to do and how to handle these situations better. Yes. But Alhamdulillah, I've got to see you and uh, Inshallah we have benefited. Inshallah. I appreciate your time. Take Thank care, you. bro. Assalamu alaikum.